What is going on, Hop Hog High School community? Welcome to our second Wellness Wednesday lunch. Excited to be joined by some of uh, the most impressive people that I know, uh, and certainly people that are fiercely dedicated to supporting Hop Hog and its broader community, uh, and really incredible to an incredible degree. Uh, so welcome to today's lunch, Amanda, Annie, Colleen, Joe, and Joy, and Christy, and Shannon. It's always an honor to be on a call with you. Prefer hanging out in person, but this has been pretty good over these last six or seven weeks. Um, and then uh, we are, just to kind of ground people into what we got going on here, we're starting this and have started it in order to help people have some tools at their disposal to ground themselves on a daily basis or a momentary basis, uh, and then to put some content out there that we think might be helpful, whether it's for students or families or faculty or the broader community, whatever makes sense. We hope that this uh, reaches one or two people in a helpful way. And if it does that, then, then uh, that's really all we need it to do. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. James Gallagher from Search Inside Yourself. Uh, to go over this week's focal points. So, Mr. Gallagher, welcome. Good to see you. And uh, take it take it from here. Thank you very much, Mr. Cook, and good afternoon, Hop Hog community. It's an honor to be here with you all today. Yeah. So um, I'd like to just introduce uh, a few practices. We actually call them micro practices, and these are just. Um, mindful practices to help us be more present in the moment and really just show up as our best selves. They are tools, tools for navigating life. And we all find ourselves um, in some pretty complex, unique times. So the, the first that I'd like to offer is just something called a minute to arrive. And the idea is before really starting any task, just taking a very intentional moment to arrive, both physically. So the idea is just kind of feeling yourself maybe seated in a chair or feet flat on the floor. And then also just checking into the mind. Where are your thoughts? Are you racing in from a prior conversation? Are you jumping off another Zoom meeting or a virtual call. And just taking a very intentional moment. And that's a minute to arrive. Within that minute, I want to try and offer one other micro practice, which is a little more specific. And that's called the three breaths practice. Quite obviously, because it can be performed in three breaths. So I'll describe it and then guide us through it so you can actually get the experience of what it's like. So on the first breath, we'll take an inhale and just find our breath. Meaning, how do you know you're breathing? And that can be the expansion of the chest on the inhale, the belly softening on the exhale. Second breath, just check in to any bodily sensations. Is there an itch? Is there some warmth? Is there a tingling in the knee? And that's just kind of reminding our brain that we have a body and it works to center us, calm us. The, on the third breath, we're gonna actually ask ourselves internally a question. What's most important right now? So I'll offer a great time to do this is when you're about to kind of automatically pick up your phone. So the next time you get that impulse, let's, let's try this three breaths process. So if it's helpful, you can kind of lower your gaze if you like, keep your eyes open or close them. And on that first breath, just sense into your body where you feel you're breathing. On the second breath, Maybe just notice any physical sensations, maybe some tension in the shoulders or the brow. And then on the third breath, in this moment, ask what's important right now. 
I need a drink, I need a snack, I need to stretch. And when you have your answer, you can raise your gaze, open your eyes, and that's just a little check in with yourself. And now you're ready to meet the next moment. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Mr. Cook. Beautiful, thank you. Um, my quick reaction, not that anybody asked for it, is just how quickly you can get to another land almost with uh, with the practice and it's, it's good and then you come out anew. So thank you for that. All right, next we talked a little bit about going from a micro practice into some strategies that can be helpful from a more communal perspective. But, but really what this means is turning it over to some people on our team to put out content or information that could prove helpful and useful to our community. So um, I've had the distinct pleasure of working alongside our school psychologist, Dr. Huang, uh, pretty closely over the last year and a half enjoyed getting to know her and seeing her deep commitment to our students and our school community. And so I've asked her to present here a little bit and she is ready to go. So Dr. Wang, come on, own the moment and take it on. From Hi everyone. Thank you, Mr. Cook, for your kind words. Thank you, uh, James, so much for leading us through uh, micro practice for today. Um, one thing we have to remember is that we are currently all in the same storm, but we are definitely not necessarily in the same boat. Um, so for us to think about how to get through this, you know, very stressful moment in time, um, I wanted to really share a short video today that I thought could be useful you know, in aiding our management of stress. Um, so Mr. Cook, if you could please um, just uh, throw up the video uh, on the screen for everyone to see. Hey, welcome back. Congratulations on finding clue number two. All right, let's talk a little bit about where our emotions might be coming from. So we might be having thoughts about things that we consider scary or we might have thoughts about just being frustrated because of a lack of freedom or thoughts about a loss of opportunities that might be grief or maybe just thoughts about uncertainty which might be causing anxiety the goal is to understand where these thoughts and emotions might be coming from and then to be able to name them clearly because as my friend Mark Brackett would say if you can name it you can tame it which brings me to the next piece. Some strategies that we might use to tame or to de-escalate emotions when we start to feel we're losing our calm. So for example, one of my favorite ones to teach is timeout. Whenever you feel stressors are overwhelming you, one great strategy is to take a timeout, to put yourself in a different room, um, to go for a walk, when maybe the news or your sibling is getting on your nerves. Just putting myself in a separate room where I am not engaging in that stressor can really help me de-escalate. And another great strategy is to walk it out. Walk it out means get out in nature, get some fresh air, you know, get a chance to have some chemicals work for you instead of against you as you get that exercise going. Another great one is to talk it out. Get a friend or family member who's a caring, understanding listener, and then speak your truth. Really get it off your chest. That's the key thing is to really get your feelings out, off your chest. As you do this, the listener can help reflect what they're hearing, which helps you get more clarity, gets you a little bit more objective, and maybe even a little bit more distance from those emotions. Another thing to think about doing is to write it out. Write it out is just get some blank paper. Write out how you're feeling and why you think you might be feeling that. Again, it helps you get perspective and distance. It helps you get you off your chest. The last one I want to talk about is breathing it out. This has been around for centuries and centuries on how to de-escalate emotion. It's just focusing on your breath and taking a few deep breaths. In order to give you an example of this, what I did is I brought a Huberman sphere. What we're going to do is we're going to inhale as the sphere expands and exhale as the sphere contracts. And what I want you to do is try to inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. 
you'll see we're inhaling a little bit shorter than we are exhaling. We're gonna try to prolong the exhale. So there we go, we're gonna take three deep breaths. Ready, set, go. Inhale through your nose. For me, I find taking somewhere between three and 10 breaths very effective when I'm starting to become unsettled. So in the link below, I'm gonna put another powerful technique that's called a mindful moment. And I want you to give that one a real try. You know, get yourself in a quiet space and give it some dedicated time. It's only about three minutes, but it's a powerful technique for finding calm. Make sure you complete the activities in the link below you'll find the password to our last video. And until then, peace out. See you next time. Welcome back. Congratulations on finding the third clue. Thought I'd sanitize before this video. Also, I want to give a quick shout out to my friends at East Hartford High School, one of the schools I worked with. Was doing a great job with SEL. All right, so I want to talk in this video about awareness. We can't manage something if we're not aware of it. And so we need to think through a framework of becoming aware of our levels of stress. The one I like to use is the traffic lights example. So a green light would be, I'm calm and I'm not feeling a stress response at all, I'm relaxed. Then we have a red light, which would mean we're having a full blown stress response. We're basically in a panic. We've, you know, we're not settled at all. The yellow light doesn't mean floor it and hope I don't get a ticket. It means caution. Yellow would be somewhere in the middle between green and red. You're feeling a medium amount of stress. You haven't quite lost it yet. And the whole key to awareness is learning to better recognize your yellow. If you can recognize your yellow, you can always intervene and not end up in red. So the traffic lights are green, yellow, and red, as we know. You're gonna have a worksheet after this video where I want you to take the time to really write down and consider how does a green light feel to you? What thoughts do you have in green light? As, as you know, we've talked about how our thoughts affect our emotions. What physical sensations do you have in green light? And then last but not least, what kinds of behaviors do you engage in in green, in green light? Then you're gonna do the same thing for yellow and the same thing for red. You really wanna get at least three for each. It's really critical that you become aware of these different lights so that you can become better at intervening in yellow. The other thing I want you to do is I want you to take this knowledge and help others. There's probably a lot of people out there that are struggling right now with stress and to be honest with you with loneliness due to isolation. So reach out to some family, friends, extended relatives and check in on them. Maybe give them some support and then eventually ask them if it's okay for you to teach them a stress management technique that you learned, maybe even teach them the traffic lights as well. And then I want you to write a reflection on how it went. This can be really powerful for them and for you because one of the best ways to learn something is to teach it. And also you're putting it to good use to serve others in a challenging time. How about let's engage with this on social media. Tweet at me your favorite stress management technique possibly use a GIF, and use the hashtag EQ in your PJs. I'll retweet anyone that I think is useful, clever, or creative. I look forward to seeing what you got. In summary, what I want you to do is, when it's yellow, intervene. You always wanna keep it green. Fill out the links below, do the activities. Please consider engaging with us on social media, and I'll see you in the next unit.
Sure. Okay. So, you know, from the video um, that was just shown, um, that was presented by um, a, a, a Keith Matheny, there are six stress management strategies that are presented, um, you know, and at the conclusion of the video, you know, we're going to now be reviewing briefly why these strategies are useful and how we could utilize them in our times of stress. So um, one of the things that um, Matheny talked about was timeout. So why is timeout you know, such an effective um, strategy. So something that we could think about is what are some of our stressors and how we can combat those stressors. For example, in the timeout strategy, you can make a list of maybe six, you know, things or situations that might cause you stress and think about which strategies might you, you, might, you, you might utilize for each of your stressors. So in timeout, this gives you a chance to maybe cool down, walk away from the pressure of the situation, just leaving the room to cool off for a bit. And walk it out, it um, just invites us to participate and engage ourselves in activities that will help us release some of those natural chemicals to help us let go of our tension and to feel better. In talking it out, this is, you know, speaking to somebody that you trust, you know, a friend, family member, um, your therapist, um, this helps you to understand the source of your stress and then to connect with others. Writing it out means, um, you know, individually, independently, you could maybe write, you know, your thoughts out on paper. This helps, gives us some distance away from our stressors and also to help us review our progress. And deep breathing, which is what um, James had led us through um, uh, today with the three breaths and the minute to arrive, um, it moves our focus from our stress to our breath. This then helps us release our tension, helps us get more oxygen into our brain for clearer thinking. And then in mindful moment, this helps us let go of unwanted thoughts. It decreases our pulse rate and it changes our focus. So the next time, you are faced with your stressors. Try to, right, prepare yourself to tackle them by utilizing some of these strategies. An activity you might want to try over the next few days is to maybe add a few other de-stressing strategies into your own routine, something that works well for you. This is especially important since we are still under quarantine, therefore our typical ways of de-stressing, such as going to the gym or watching movies in the theater or retail therapy, um, may not be available to us right now. So think about how um, and think about and also notice how you feel after these activities and these strategies will then become future tools for you in your toolbox. Um, I will ask Mr. Cook to put up some resources, you know, um, at the end of the stream so that you can access them at your own time. So um, I hope um, that this has been helpful today and I am looking forward to more of our sessions um, in the coming weeks. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Huang. Really appreciate it. Uh, you did a wonderful job. So um, I'm wondering if there's any questions that em emerge. And Mrs. Farr, you want to run a, run a brief Q&A here uh, for people? Sure. So I'm wondering if anyone has any thoughts or questions with regards to, uh, you know, the micro practice that James introduced to us or... Uh, the presentation that Annie shared with us. And since we have this Brady Brunch style, you can just raise your hand if you got one. Hmm. Christy, go ahead. Um, I was wondering if this is something that, I know a lot of people come on the morning show. I don't know how many people are still coming on the, uh, the wellness afternoons yet, um, but I'm wondering if we can have this sent out through IC to all of the kids taking AP exams so that they could um, run through it before they take their AP exams and, and finals even. But, you know, particularly right now, I'm thinking, you know, the AP exam starts in five minutes, they need to log in. So um, obviously not today, but I don't know how we could get it up for tomorrow. <laughs> Love it. That's great. James, I have a question for you. Um, what is so significant about um, the breaths and why three? Thank you for the question. So um, two answers, really. The first, the significance of the breath, and I'm not a scientist, but I know a bit in terms of the benefit of the breath. The breath is literally accessing a management around our nervous system, particularly the exhale. 
It's actually the reverse on the inhale. If we think about it, when we need adrenaline, we need energy, or we get startled, we, we take our breath in. That activates the sympathetic nervous system, if I can sound fancy. And that arms us to flee or fight. On the exhale, that is the rest and digest. That activates the parasympathetic nervous system. It's the opposite. It is our body's million year old um, self-management and regulation tool. So that's, th that's the one answer in terms of the significance of the breath. Accessing three obviously just gives us a couple more turns. What I also wanna mention is in terms of what Dr. Wong said, what Dr. Hong said about um, centering, it doesn't have to be the breath. We can center on physical sensations. We can center on the ambient sounds in the rooms. So not to overcomplicate it, but there is some significance about the breath in terms of nervous system regulation. But then on the other hand, if you're about to take a test and the breath isn't accessible to you, it's not feeling right, you can just touch the desk. You can just listen to the room, the sounds in the room and have the same type of regulation um, occur. That's great. Thank you. Annie, you have a question. So, you know, in, in, you know, going through the SIY training and in practicing meditation, you know, myself, what I've been also finding is that walking meditations has been, you know, helpful or um, doing activities and being mindful about the specific activities. I always joke that uh, I do the best cleaning when I'm procrastinating. Um, when I'm procrastinating and don't want to do something, I throw my energy into cleaning the bathroom and getting the rugs, you know, really, really clean, right? Perfectly little lines. But my focus is on just creating that space for me to do that particular task and moving my mind off of something that is stressful. So um, I find meditation, walking meditations has been very, very helpful for me. That's great. Colleen, you had your hand raised. Yeah, James, I, in my training with you, I know you said some people find it difficult to access the breath or focus on the breath. What I liked about the video, Dr. Huang, that you showed is that he used a Hoberman sphere, I think it's called, and yeah. it gave a visualization for the inhale and the exhale. And I thought that might be helpful for some people who have difficulty really just focusing on such an intangible. Absolutely. Are there other thoughts or questions? Annie. One of the other things about breathing is that, you know, um, it took me probably about a year with my yoga instructor to learn how to breathe. And we think that breathing is just such an automatic kind of thing. Everyone knows how to do it. But to really breathe and access, you know, those, you know, deep areas, I feel like um, it took me a little bit to understand the breath in, the breath out, how to not hyperventilate. Um, how to be okay with not following along with what everyone else in my class, you know, is breathing, like at the pace that they're breathing. I was finding that I was taking very deep breaths and it took me much longer to exhale than maybe my, uh, my classmates in, in the yoga class. So um, when we are meeting the community and when we're doing it, you know, um, the breathing, um, maybe some of the micro practices on our own, we should, you know, not criticize ourselves for not, you know, keeping up with people. Um, I, I think that for me has been very helpful. Mm. Annie, one of the things on your slides was about that mindful walk. Um, and I have found that to be especially helpful um, in the morning, in the afternoon, like wh whenever um, I'm able to just take a break even if it's for a quick 15 minutes and just to really kind of be in tune with my surroundings, you know, and push all the distractors out. And I encourage everyone, um, especially on days like today or sitting outside, as you see, but just to take that time to really 
kind of appreciate. And I think it also helps us to come to center and be grateful for what's around us. You know, um, if you live near the high school, you will see these beautiful trees in bloom now. Thank you, Mr. Ruffini, for that. Um, or or the certain certain neighborhoods with the different flowering trees. It's just, you know, you don't often um, appreciate. But I think with the mindful walking and just taking the time to just focus on what's around you, it helps get you back to center. Um, does anyone else have a question or a thought they wanted to share? I can just James, you look I, like you want to share something. Yes, thank you. I wanted to uh, just appreciate your mentioning of the mindful walk, um, Annie as well, and then the power of just kind of seeing the nature and not just kind of being on autopilot. The trees are always there, but what little difference can make to actually intentionally connecting with the nature. It's so important. And then my mind is also around students taking finals, taking APs. You use the term, Joy, around connecting with your surroundings. You can also do that inside. And that can also offer a grounding practice. We might be all up here in our heads about to take an exam or an important, have an important conversation. We can just, as I'm doing now, orienting into the room that I am in, seeing the walls, noticing the colors. And that takes me a little bit out of the obsessive, maybe nervous thoughts of my exam or an upcoming conversation. So I just wanted to extend from your point, powerful one around nature and just offer, it can, it can be an indoor practice as well, just orienting to surroundings. That's great. Did anyone else want to share or have questions for James or for the group? Shannon. I just wanted to make a comment. Um, you know, we keep using the term practice, and I think it's important to note that we say that because, you know, as has been pointed out, this is not something, there's no right or wrong to it. And it's also not something that sometimes feels comfortable in the beginning. Um, I will also you know, often say that now with that first breath that I take, I feel such a different clarity in my life than when I first started this and it seemed weird and what do they mean breathing? Um, so we just would encourage people, you know, to practice it, try it a little bit when it feels comfortable, when you feel like you need it. And, you know, in time you may feel like we do that there's so much value in even that minute to arrive. That's great. Thank you so much. Annie. Sorry. Here, Sorry, here. I was having trouble with the microphone. Um, I just want to just, you know, extend my appreciation to the group that's on today. Um, as you all know, I was super nervous coming on. I'm not used to being on camera and I am not used to presenting in, in, in such a way. Um, so the minute arrive, you know, was super helpful in terms of grounding and the interaction, I think the engagement, um, you know, with my colleagues, you know, that I haven't seen, you know, in person has been super helpful. So thank you all so much. I'm super grateful for all of you. Great. You did a really nice job, Annie. You did a great job and you should not doubt yourself. I think too, once, you know, you take those breaths, a lot of the stress falls away. And Shannon, you bring up a great point. It's just about practice. And, you know, for those of you that are watching us, I mean, it, sometimes it can feel weird or unusual when you first start it, but it is a practice and it becomes a great habit. And so like, for example, uh, when I first took the Search Inside Yourself training, uh, one of the things that I started to do with my own practice was, on my drive to school would be to turn the radio off. I was always listening to the news on my ride in and had this constant bombardment of noise around me. And once I stopped that, it made such a difference because I mentally prepared myself for arriving 
to the high school and being in the moment at the high school. So even right now when we're home, we can be bombarded by the technology, by the news of the moment, um, and all of these things that are surrounding us that could be swirling with negativity. So I would encourage all of you to take those moments where you turn the noise off and that you're truly in the moment, whether you're sitting outside or you're sitting at a, at a quiet space in your home, but have those moments for yourself where you can just kind of get back to center and start the practice and you'll notice a difference. Beautiful. James, did you have any other thoughts for us before we turn it back to Mr. Cook? Um, always, I think, as we know. Um, so I appreciate the opportunity and just, um, quickly also wanted to share the gratitude and Annie mentioned <clears throat> the connection, connection, human connection is also a grounding practice. It doesn't have to be the sitting with the eyes closed or anything that maybe isn't comfortable. Um, but really intentionally saying, I need to call my friend. I need to call my cousin and just getting that emotional connection. It's virtual these days. Um, it still counts. That's a mindfulness practice and a, and a way to also serve yourself in addition to the things we can do on our own. Thank you, Ms. Farrar. Great. And Mrs. Farrar, thanks for uh, facilitating the Q&A. Big uh, shout out to Dr. Huang for uh, jumping in and, and leading on this front. Mr. Gallagher, thank you again for, for joining us and continuing to partner with us in this space. Um, and uh, colleagues on the call, thanks for being in the present moment with us here and really engaging in the content and getting to a space where we're deeply engaged with what's happening right here. Uh, and, and that's ultimately, I think, a big part of this is, is trying to ground ourselves to be present and here with each other uh, and really with ourselves uh, as well. So thank you. And Mr. Gallagher, if you have any closing thoughts uh, to, to send us off into the distance here until next week. Uh, but that would uh, near conclusion of our second Wellness Wednesday lunch, Mr. Gallagher, for a closing. Thank you so much. Um, so I'll close <clears throat> relating back to the point Ms. Griffin made, thank you, around the term practice. Um, and let's make some comparisons. We wouldn't step onto a basketball court or a stage for a performance and expect to be able to perform at our best the first time. Um, this is a mental practice, a mental training, just like we prioritize physical practice and physical training. So allow yourself to build that muscle memory, to stumble through, feel things are uncomfortable or awkward. The invitation is truly the word Miss Griffin offered to us, which is practice, just play with it. So on that note, we opened with a minute to arrive. We can also do a minute to exit. So we're all about to exit our call and move on to the next demands of the day, the to-do lists. So we can do the same thing on a minute to exit. So I'll just offer same three breaths. So just finding a just comfortable posture. Breath one, see if you can feel yourself breathing. Breath two, noticing how your body feels. We've been sitting a little bit longer now. And then ask yourself the question, what's most important for me right now? Do I need a walk, a break, answer an email, maybe a snack? Have that answer. And when you're ready, you can raise your gaze or open your eyes. And you have a few more tools to navigate the day. It was a pleasure to be with you all. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Peace out, everybody. Beautiful stuff. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.